Hi everybody, welcome to the SME Business Academy's interviews. Uh, so as always, my name is John Covey, I'm a multi-award winning business coach, speaker, sales trainer. And so the idea of the SME Business Academy is to provide valuable information, practical business advice for all small businesses. And right here today we are sat with, let me get this right, so it's Julia, is it Ponan? Uh, Julianne Ponan. Julianne Ponan, sorry. Um, founder of Creative Nature, uh, which is all superfoods and healthcare related. Yep. 23 years old? Um, started when I was 22 years old. Started, sorry, I apologise. Started when you were 22. Award winning, um, startup mentor for Virgin, and your products are already stocked in Tesco's. Yes. Need I say any more? <laughs> uh, yeah, there's a long way to go though. Um, lots more to do. Always. Always. So for, for the, 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 the regulars that tune in, if you, as always, look somewhere up here, there's a little subscribe button. So please subscribe to make sure you get more of these sound bites and, and useful tips and knowledge. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hand it over to you, Julianne, and please feel free to tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, so um, I finished uni um, at 21 um, and then I was I went over to Beijing and worked in investment banking for a while. Uh, then I came back to the UK and I um, basically took over Creative Nature. The company itself at that point was doing lots of different products, um, candles, incense, lots of different things. Uh, and it was actually in over £56,000 losses. Oh, right, okay. Um, so it was a bit crazy. I was a bit in the deep end at that point. Um, but yeah, anyway, so I invested in the brand, uh, revamped the whole thing, um, so launched new products, uh, had a cool range, um, and we launched the uh, superfood bars, basically, because I suffer from anaphylaxis, which is a, an allergy where you stop breathing. Okay. Um, to things like nuts, uh, chocolate, certain additives, and lots of other things. Um, and there was nothing like healthy out there that didn't contain some sort of nut. Yeah. And I was like, right, well, what about people who suffer from this? Like, sure. there's got to be people out there like me. So, yeah, it was basically finding a solution. And that's what we did. Uh, we formulated the free from snack bars. We now have four of them in the range and we're launching uh, some new products shortly as well. Fantastic. So, I mean, is, is it, am I right in thinking that a lot of the time the allergies is not to, to all the different types of nuts? It's usually peanuts? Um, well, mine is to all nuts. Right. Uh, so, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of... Um, it's a bit controversial. Some people say it's only peanuts, but most of the time, if you're allergic to peanuts, you're allergic to another nut. Right, okay. Um, or you haven't found out that you're allergic to one, and then you find out later on, which isn't the best thing. Sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, a lot of the bars out there, you'll see they contain like cashew butter, which is um, one of the allergens as well, or pistachio or something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. So, so things are going well. So you've been, you've been, you started when you were twenty-two. How, how old are you now, if you don't mind my asking? Uh, just twenty-six. So you're twenty-six. So you've had uh, four years. Yeah, just just about four years. Just yeah. about four years, and so you, you you'll obviously seen a lot of change, and uh, you've probably had some ups and downs, some really positives, and some really lows. I imagine in that time. Yeah. So. Um when I first started, it was quite difficult. It was literally just me, and um, I employed one other person um, who I met at Waitrose. We <laughs> used to be friends and stack shelves, which was interesting. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, from there, literally, it was really hard getting the company back into profit. Um, but within 18 months, we were back into profit, luckily. Amazing. Um, it was basically tightening all the budgets, looking at your whole balance and seeing where you can cut back and how you can do it and how many different hats you can wear in the business. Sure. But trust me, don't wear all the hats all the time because there are going to be things that you're not good at. For example, I was spending hours of my day invoicing yeah. when I could have been bringing in the next sale, yeah. which was probably better use of my time. Absolutely. And it took me quite a while to figure that out. So I needed to learn to time manage quite early on. And I, but anyway, how did how did you find yourself doing that then? What 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 were the best 
well, what's I suppose what's the best advice you can give some people to to understand that and and how to implement it? It sounds really silly, but write a list, but actually write one. Don't type it up on the computer. Don't put it into your calendar. Physically get a pad and paper and write your list. Okay. Don't make it ridiculously long, like 20, 30 things, because you're never going to get those done. And don't put stupid things on there, like answering emails. Right. We all know we've got to answer the emails, but if you actually pick the ones that you need to answer that will propel your business to the next level, you you'll get much more done and finish each thing on the list and then actually cross it out. Because I find a lot of, um, even entrepreneurs that I mentor, they tend to write loads of things on their list and then start doing a bit of one and then move on to the next one and never actually finish what they're doing. So they need to finish it and they will be motivated to do the next thing. Absolutely. And I think that you'll find, and you will be totally aware that, that lots and lots of people do that. What's what's the what's the best advice you can give someone to, to ensure that they see the tasks through? I would say sort of keep yourself focused, block yourself from answering other phone calls and answering other emails. Those are the main culprits for things. Obviously, if there's something major that you have to do, for example, if Tesco's call me up and say, oh, I need something now, I will stop and get it done. Yeah, yeah. But if it's something that's not going to help me right now then I will leave it and I will schedule that in later on fantastic wonderful so I mean things are going really well by the sounds of things for you um, so what we've got is just a handful of well a handful or so of different questions that we feel that the SME Business Academy community can can really reach out and uh, take some advice and guidance from someone like yourself what's that's built something amazing uh, so I suppose the first question really is, what's your motivation? Um, there's lots of different things. I get motivated by other entrepreneurs as well. Okay. Um, especially when you're part of like networking groups, or I talk at a lot of events as well, and seeing the transformation of other entrepreneurs is really motivating for myself too. Yeah, yeah. So what, what, what out of there is gives you the kind of the biggest kick? What gives you the biggest motivation? It's sort of seeing what they can achieve. Yeah. And if they can achieve it, there's no reason why I can't. Um, and it's surrounding yourself with people who want to better themselves. Yes, yes. Wonderful, absolutely fantastic. Um, I'm a big person about mindset. Uh, what's your thoughts on mindset and, and how what, what advice would you give people to make sure the mindset's in the right place? Mindset's really, really important. Um, people get distracted a lot of the time, though. Um, I just actually recently went on a detox retreat that was all on mindset and things like that. We we supply a lot of our products to these detox retreats because it's really important what nutrition you put in, yeah. um, and then using your mind with that nutrition to what to get the output you want. Fantastic. So basically, focus is really, really key, um, and taking time out and out of your day to actually think about what you've achieved for that day and what your next steps are going to be. Brilliant. Do, do you have a Do you have a particular ritual that you kind of follow to keep your mind and, and mindfulness and the mindset and everything all in place? Do you do you like meditate or do you have certain certain activities that you do to to keep it fresh? I actually find Zumba works really well for me. Zumba? Yeah, I, I find that's sort of my go-to to de-stress, to get myself more motivated. Literally everything can be worked out with a Zumba class. <laughs> Wonderful, that's fantastic. And, and, and um, do you do that several times a week or is it every day? I used to do it every single day um, and try to do it twice a day, two classes. Right. Um but I just can't now, so it tends to be about three times a week. Okay, wonderful, which is, which is uh, again, still a, a healthy amount of exercise. So, 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 dad do it from nothing and yeah 
there's no like real answer to that. I don't think. Like, if you're thinking about it more than seventy percent of your day, I think you should go for it. Otherwise, you're going to regret it. And that's what a lot of entrepreneurs don't do. So, for example, I have a lot of people who are always scared that they're going to fail, but they need to just get out of their comfort zone and take that risk. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and how do you find that works best for you? What's the best motivator to get you out of your comfort zone and strive forward? My team, actually. Um, building yourself a really good team or network or support, if you want. Because I know when you're an entrepreneur at the beginning, sometimes you won't have the funds to have a whole team. Yeah. But having the people around you that will support you and bring positivity, it, like it's called the yes gene, we call it in our team. The yes um, gene. Yeah, okay. and they need to have that drive, they need to have that passion to actually get the business to the next level and if they're willing to do it with you, like five heads that are willing to do that is much better than just one. Wonderful. So how, how did you find that you made the transition from being just you to actually being in a position where you can take, take on a team or even just one? I was really reluctant and I did have um, some bad experiences, I'm not going to lie. Um, I actually a person that I met uh, Richard Reed he's the in, founder of Innocent uh, Drinks yeah. he was at an award ceremony and he did a talk um, about his employees and that he made the mistake of keeping them on too long Okay. Um, basically they lost everything they ever made in 2008 because they didn't let go of their, the people that weren't pulling their weight okay yeah and that's when I knew, right, actually, I'm not just going to employ people for the sake of employing people. I need them to actually have the output that I want and I need for my business. And I think it's really important that entrepreneurs don't just employ people for the sake of it and don't feel bad when you do have to let these, these people go because they're not sharing the vision that you want you, you need them to. Fun, yeah, brilliant, brilliant advice, wonderful. Um how do you go about making sure you get things done? So how do you make things happen? What's the best way for you to do that? In what do you mean by that? In terms of like just the everyday tasks or do you mean like a launch? Um, just just in your everyday tasks of getting, you know, your business, doing the right things. There's a lot there's 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 a million different things that's distracting you. How do you how do you ensure you get things done? So again, back to the lists, I make sure I have everything in my list to do then I also have my calendar really um, allocated very very well uh, so diary management is really important again making sure that the people in your team know what they're doing because if they don't know what you're doing and they and you don't know what they're doing you're not managing them very well and you're probably spending a lot of time chasing them going why haven't you done this yeah, um, yeah. but yeah. they'll probably be like well I didn't know I had to do that yeah, sure. So you need to make sure everyone's on the same page and you're all working together. together. An example of this is when we had to launch into Tesco's um, and we had to launch in three weeks' time. And it was just an impossibility. I didn't even think we were going to make it. And there was like one last bit at the end. Basically, we had to get the pallets into Tesco's and we oh. didn't have a forklift. Ah. And so my colleague, I only had one employee at this point still, oh. And he pulled them all the way up the road, <laughs> these 10, 800 kilogram pallets. Oh, wonderful. But um, it was all about teamwork sure. and knowing what each other was doing. Which is, which is massive, yeah. isn't it? I mean, from, 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 from there, that's, you, that's what you really strive for, isn't it? To have that kind of level of commitment and teamwork and passion. It's amazing. Yeah. And if you motivate your team, they will perform like we do a lot of team days. We literally just climbed the O2. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was pretty fun. And one of our team is not too good with heights, so I um, had to help them along a bit. Wonderful, that's amazing. That's brilliant. Um, what about this one then? How do you handle defeat? Um, how do I handle defeat? Well, there's lots of doors that will shut a lot of the time, but you just have to keep calling. Um, for example, we 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 could call, say, 50 times a day and not get through to anyone. Mm -hmm. But if you don't keep calling, that 51th 
call might be your success. Sure, sure. So you just need to keep going. So when you feel like quitting... Got to power on through. Oh, my sorry, my colleague has just told me that it's 51st and not 50. <laughs> do apologise for that. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. Um, so, what what about your job? Is it that gives you the most happiness? <laughs> Probably. Uh, that's a hard question, actually. Um, the freedom is really nice to have. Um, yep. Being an entrepreneur, being able to leave when I want to leave, although you never end up leaving. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also. Just seeing your product actually get into a store, it's just sort of, it's a surreal feeling. Like yeah. you, you work so hard to get it there and then when it's finally there and you see the product and you, you, you're you just so amazed by it. Uh, yeah, brilliant, brilliant. Um, so what what's the, if you had to kind of summarise what it is you're trying to really achieve with your product, what, what would be the one word that would summarise what you're trying to achieve? The one word, um, health, really. Yeah. Um, we're trying to bring, bring health to the nation, especially with the obesity crisis. Uh, there's a lot of it at the moment. And kids just, they're eating so much fast food. Yeah. We're trying to make fast food healthy yeah. and still taste good. Like yeah. It's still got to taste good. People don't want to eat products that don't taste good. Sure, sure, yeah. That's the truth. That is the truth. Um, so so what, what what I suppose what's one of your biggest influences then? What what inspired you? So I'm not I know we talked about a bit of motivation earlier, but what, what influences you? Is it is it like a mentor for yourself? Is it a, a role model? Yeah, I have quite a few um, mentors. Um Richard Reed being one of my inspirations. Yeah. It, it, like the way he took his company from nothing to selling to Coca Cola, which I don't want to sell to Coca Cola. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it's just incredible to see what other people have done. And I also, what motivates me, I have, I eventually want to set up my own charity. Okay. And give back to all the local communities we source from, because we source from all around the world, like from Peru, Brazil, Hawaii, and it'd be really good to actually give back as well. That's real wonderful. That's that's a, 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 a. And have you got a deadline when you'd like to do that by then? Well, we already we want to start next year with doing it on like a profit basis, where we'll give a certain percentage back to. Um, these communities, but eventually, say it's a nice time, I'd like to have my own charity set up by then. Then I know where the money's going rather than giving it to someone else. So then it might go into admin fees for all I know. I, I, I'd rather know exactly where it's going. Outstanding, brilliant, brilliant. Um, so, are you, are you a reader? Do you read much at all? Being completely honest, no. <laughs> um, I'm more audio. Okay. I read a lot at uni. Like when I went to university, I think I did my fair share of reading, oh, reading. <laughs> <laughs> with journals and just too much, I think. But I do love to listen to audio books and okay. podcasts. Podcasts are absolutely amazing. They're like a lifesaver. You can just download them, listen to them on the tube, and there's so many tips for like entrepreneurs. There's even like government ones now, ones now that that give you tips on how to export where to get your products into, who's looking for certain products. It, it's just incredible, the technology that's out there. Absolutely. And, and so from the podcast, have you got any any favourites that you always kind of go back to? I tend not to go back. I'm, I'm always looking for the next thing. Okay. Um, I, I do like um, Zestology. Uh, it's, it's more of a mindset one. Okay. Um, and that I use to basically de-stress and learn new ways to um, involve my my mindset and my work together. Um, it, it, it's quite good. It, it's not for everyone, I'm not going to say that, but yeah. it's definitely worth a, a look at. Brilliant. And then and then the audio books, is there any particular authors that you'd highly recommend that you must, you must listen to? The E-Myth 
Um, that that book is very very good on audio. Yeah. Uh, it's all about managing your time, and if you don't know how to manage your time, hundred percent it will get you sorted out. <laughs> <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Um, any others? Um, not in particular. I tend to read more for. Like, well, listen to audiobooks for the enjoyment rather than just the business side. Oh, okay, yeah, cool, brilliant. Um, so I imagine that to help your business really flourish the way it, the way it has and the way it continues, do, are you quite in? Do, do you embrace technology? So, is there like any particular software or applications that you use that makes it a lot simpler to run your business? Yeah, so um, Infusionsoft has been very, very good for us. Okay, yeah. Um, it's sort of like an email marketing system, but it's where you can do lots of different sequences in your, within your website. So, for example, if someone buys one product, you can send them an email three days later saying, oh, why don't you now mix this product with this new product that we have? And you can segment it to age, to... Um, gender, if, if anything you, you want really. It, it does take a long time to set up yeah. and you do need someone running it full time right. um, because it takes a lot of man hours but in terms of the technology it, it's incredible. Really powerful. And that's, that's one of the ones that I would definitely recommend. Um, then also for small businesses I'd say things like QuickBooks, yeah. something that's quite simple, so like simple applications. Um, it just helps them, for example, if they're not savvy with accounts and they don't know how to use Sage, it, QuickBooks is a good starter uh, for young entrepreneurs especially. Fantastic. Do you, do you, what about like social media? Do, are you guys really... Oh, yes, yeah, so we're big on social media. <laughs> um, our, t our whole team's like, the average age is like 25, well, no, 24. Yeah. <laughs> So, so, so you yeah, were born. Everyone's big on social media. You were born into social media. Yes, we were born. Uh, we have that sort of on, on our side. I must admit. Um, <laughs> so we've got like we've got around thirty eight thousand followers across our social media now, um, and that's only been in the last year and a bit. So yeah, we were doing quite well. I'd say Facebook's definitely um, expensive, <laughs> but it's worth it. Um, Twitter is really good for business and also profiling. If you want to launch a product or anything like that, Twitter is really good. Instagram is great for brand loyalty. You'll find a lot of customers will rebuy from Instagram. Okay. Um, so yeah, I would recommend all of them. Oh. We are now starting Pinterest okay. um, and Google Hangout shortly. So. Yeah, lots on the social side. So how, how do you go about managing them? Do you, is there a particular platform that you use to manage them or you do, do you, or do you still use them individually? Oh, no, we don't use them individually anymore. <laughs> um, we do have a social media girl that works on it pretty much, I'd say nearly full-time. She okay. does do other things as well. Uh, but, yeah, so she uses things like Hootsuite. Sure, sure, yeah. Um, I'm sure you've heard of that. Yeah, we it's, did. We did one of these interviews with Hootsuite about a fortnight ago. Oh, okay. So yeah. that, were, that were really interesting. Yeah, because you can schedule literally anything. So say you want it all done on a Monday, you can schedule it all then and it will do it for like two, three weeks automated. Brilliant. But I do recommend doing like organic posts in between that because obviously if something happens in the news and you haven't changed your Hootsuite to be relevant to that, yeah, you, it's not going to work. It doesn't look very professional, does it? Yeah. No. <laughs> Fantastic. So, so if we had to summarise the entire thing then for people what's either wanting to just get started, oh, excuse me, just get started or people that are wanting to grow the business, start to look at recruiting and take it to the next level, what, what, is one of the biggest traits that you feel is so important to help people do this? Time management. That's ah. my 100%. They need to learn what they're good at. And if they're not good at it, then they need to find someone that they can outsource to. Yeah. Fantastic. Wonderful. Well, that's been really helpful. I'm sure that the, the SME Business Academy community will really take a lot of valuable information from what you shared there, Julian. It's, it's wonderful to have this 25 minutes or so chat with you. It's, it's, been, it's been a pleasure. Um, so obviously, I want to thank you for, for giving your time up and, and sharing that with us. It's, it's greatly appreciated. 
Um, as, as always, again, if you want to subscribe, there's somewhere here, or just floating along, there'll be a button there. You can subscribe to the Business Academy channel, the SME Business Academy channel. Uh, and once again, Julianne, um, thank you so much for your time. What about where people can find out more about either yourself or your businesses? Is there somewhere that you can find out more? Yep, so that's uh, www.creativenaturesuperfoods.com. Yep. And they can also find out about me on LinkedIn, just Julianne Ponen. That's absolutely wonderful. Well, again, thank you for your time. Uh, again, I'm John Covey, and it's been wonderful having you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so, hi, I'm Stefan. Um, I'm the author of an Amazon bestseller called Business Networking for Dummies, um, which has sold pretty well around the world. Um, my next book, Instant Networking, is out on May the 23rd, um, also published by Wiley, and uh, I, I help people make more sales from networking. That's what I get to do for a job. I drive around the UK um, and talk to people about networking, and as a result, they sell more. That's, um, that's what I do. That's what I do. Fantastic. That's wonderful. And I mean, networking is such a big thing, isn't it? and I think there's a lot of people still, they still don't understand or grasp the power that networking has. I mean, what's what's your take on on introducing someone to networking firstly? I I was speaking um, two weeks ago to a bunch of university students, and I was helping them grasp the concept that all these connections that they can make now could have such a big influence.